Hello, I'm Vicki Tufano. I'm a parishioner at Ascension, and I served as pastoral associate and liturgy director in the parish a while ago. Before we begin, let's take a moment of silence, perhaps take a deep breath, and prepare ourselves to hear what God gives us to hear. This Sunday is the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time of Year B. This week's readings are closely related to those of last week. Last week's first reading alluded to the unjust suffering that God's chosen one will endure. The gospel echoed the theme. When Peter declares in the midst of the disciples that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord expands on what that means. He will be rejected, will suffer and die, and will rise again. Peter pulls Jesus aside and tells him to stop saying these things. Jesus tells Peter that he's out of line. Then Jesus summons not just the disciples, but the whole crowd to tell them that anyone who wants to follow him must be willing to lose their life, which pretty much ends the conversation with Peter, but not the teaching. In between that passage and this Sunday's Gospel, the scriptures tell us of Jesus' transfiguration when his glory was revealed. God tells the disciples who were there, including Peter, that Jesus is God's son and commands them to listen to him. Jesus' revelation that he is to die and rise is bound up with the revelation that he is the son of God. It also teaches the disciples, including us, who we are. And now, today's gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise but they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to answer, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way, who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the 12, and said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus' journey through Galilee with his disciples is heading to Jerusalem, where he will be crucified and be raised from the dead. Jesus' primary focus during this trip is to prepare his disciples to understand what following him means and what they are to call others to. And they are not getting it. Peter's confession of Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, seemed like a breakthrough, but Peter resisted understood, understanding what Jesus meant by that. After the transfiguration, Jesus again tells his disciples that he would suffer, die, and rise, and it falls flat. They didn't get it, and they didn't want to get it. Apparently, Peter missed the whole point of God himself telling him to listen to Jesus. 
he and the rest were more interested in which of them was the greatest. But they were afraid to tell Jesus that. Rightly so. Apparently, he knew anyway. The scriptures don't say it, but my guess is he was mightily annoyed. So, another lesson. If you want to be great, be a servant. And not a servant to a great person, but to a child. In the culture of Jesus' time, the child had no status. All the precious notions that we have about children in our culture did not pertain in Jesus' time. Children were powerless and vulnerable, like a servant, or a woman, or a prisoner, or a foreigner, or a debtor, or a beggar. Jesus tells his followers, if you want to be great, serve those who have no power, who cannot serve you in return. Jesus uses the word receive in reference to how we are to relate to the children and to the powerless of the world. They are to be welcomed and included, not treated with pity, not condescended to or made invisible, not shuffled to the back, but invited into our midst as Jesus placed the child among the disciples, embraced as Jesus embraced the child. He tells his disciples, including us, in so many words, if you follow me, you will lose your life, just as I am going to, just as I have. You will suffer, perhaps not in a terrible death, but in losing what greatness, what status you imagined your life would have. Greatness is service. It is giving your life. And in giving your life, you will be given it back by Jesus and by the one who sent him. You will dazzle like the sun. You will not need to compete for glory. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of the poor and defender of the just, in your kingdom, the last become first, the gentle are strong, and the lowly exalted. Give us wisdom from above that we may find in your servant Jesus the pattern of true discipleship and the grace to persevere in following him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.